Hi friends, welcome to my channel VLSI Gyan. In today's session, we will see how we can generate a clock using Verilog to test the functionality of our design in the test bench, right? So before going into the video, I request you to please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Okay, so let's get started. So friends, we'll see in a brief what is a clock. You all know what is a clock, but still we'll uh, go for a small introduction about the clock. So clock refers to a periodic signal. It is a periodic signal that synchronizes the operation of various components present within an integrated circuit, right? Then it serves as a reference, time reference. It is a time reference for coordinating the execution of different digital circuits within the IC. It is Its main role or crucial role is controlling the time and sequencing the operation and it ensures that the data is valid and stable before it is processed. Now we'll see actually what is the purpose of using a clock in the VLSI design. So first is synchronization. Synchronization like all the sequential and the combinational circuits within the IC relies on the clock signal. To, uh, to synchronize their operation and ensure proper time, right? And the second one is register and latch control. We know that registers and latches are used to store the data. So a clock signal is used to control the operation of flip-flops, registers, latches, determining when the data is to be stored and when it is to be transferred, right? The third one is timing constraints. The clock signal is used to define timing constraints for various parts in the IC, ensuring that the signal arrives within the specific time window. We know we have certain windows in the timing constraints like setup time, hold time. So we want the signal to arrive within that specific window. So for that also, we need a clock, right? Next one is power management. Clock signal gating uh, are employed to dynamically control the signal uh, to reduce power consumption, actually, we want to reduce the power consumption, so we reduce this clock signal, which when the certain circuits are inactive, so we don't pass the uh, clock to a particular circuit, so that the power is saved using the clock gating technique. Right, so let's uh, move to the next uh, part of this video, where we will see how we can write a clock, very log code for generating a clock. So there are two methods. One is called uh, using uh, always statement and the other one is forever. Friends, there is another way also using repeat. But what happens in the repeat is repeat generates the clock only for a certain number of times. Like how many times you are giving the repeat instruction, the um, uh, processor will or the system will perform only for that many number of times. But for the always and state forever, it is continuous generation of clock, right? So let's see in the next uh, slide how we can write the code for always and forever. So using the always, you can see reg clock because mostly we are writing this code in the test bench to generate the clock. We write in mostly in test bench. So I have taken clock as a reg type and uh, initially I am making the clock as zero and you can see the initially the clock is zero. Always hash 10. Hash is what delay. So delay of 10 time units. What happens? Clock is toggled. So it is zero. So now it will become one. So it is one. Now again, after 10 uh, time minutes, it is again becoming zero. So like that, we are generating the clock. Again, it is toggling for every 10 time units. So the units you can specify using the time scale, tick time scale uh, compiler directive, right? So this is how we can generate the clock using a always. Next to see how we can write the code for clock generation using a forever block. This is also very simple. What you have initially you are taking clock as zero and you have taken hash five. You can take also hash 10. It depends upon the clock frequency, the time period, how much you want. Okay. So you are again, we are again toggling the clock. See here, initial it is zero. After five units, it is one. And again, after five units, it is zero. Again, five units, it is one. 
like that continuously it is toggling. So we are getting a clock signal with 50% duty cycle. Okay. So this is how we can write the code for um, generating a clock using Verilog. I hope this uh, made uh, clear. Uh, this gave you a clear idea that how we can generate a clock using Verilog. So thank you for watching the video and please comment uh, your queries in the comment section so that uh, I will try to uh, clarify your doubts and uh, I will make a video if possible on your doubts. So please share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.